Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry or the starting point of what are schemes. So, uh, take one. It will take me a while to get through it because I want to do it slowly. So it's kind of a, kind of a big abstraction from what we have seen so far because you really lose the underlying or you're supposed to lose the underlying uh, geometric picture and you push everything really into the realm of algebra but hopefully I will explain it well enough so that everything kind of makes sense um, yeah so schemes have been around for quite a while but well we'll see what it is I show you I think the oldest picture that I know at least of a scheme uh, but we are, today we are not really talking about schemes it will take a little bit longer but we talk about that is almost something that is almost a scheme which people usually call SPAC. SPAC, like spectrum. SPAC, SPAC, SPAC. We'll see what SPAC actually means. But here, um, the running example for the next few videos, we are trying to understand everything in this picture. And as far as I'm aware, I uh, might be wrong, this is like the oldest picture of a scheme in print, um, or at least one of the oldest. And it's kind of a very famous one. It's spec c it's spec of the integers we'll see what that means and it's from a uh, kind of a famous book uh, this one here which i just opened on on google books uh, maybe i zoom out a little bit so it fits better on this page and it's this famous book by of, of mumford lectures on curves on algebraic surfaces and if i'm lucky so it's from it's from the 1960s it was roughly when people started writing up um, all of these ideas of modern algebraic geometry in textbook form. So they were around for, for earlier, but before people started writing up in textbook form, it takes a while. This is one of the, the early ones. Um, and if you scroll down, and I'm lucky enough, I actually haven't checked, we'll see. I'm lucky enough, then uh, Google will show me the picture. So this is like the, the usual, well, maybe I can zoom in again, the good old, good old 60s style, where you have the typewriter type style whatever 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 maybe this is zoomed in a little bit too much let's zoom out again a little bit and hopefully around page 20 we'll find this is a picture oh there's a picture in a book out of the 60s that, that's that's uh, rare hopefully around page 20 if it's not blocked by google we should find um is this empty we should find our picture oh here we go this is supposed to be our picture. I guess Google has put a, a, a copyright on top of it, which reminds me to say that this picture is actually from the book of Mumford. It's a famous one, so I feel like I feel like it's, it's okay to pull it up. Okay, and the goal is to understand uh, this type of picture. We'll start very very slowly. Well, that's that's how you should always start. Right? Good level design. A lot of people forget about the level design. Right? Level design means it's kind of a nice learning curve. So we try to get a nice learning curve. So mostly today I will kind of give you reminders and then we start with the definition of a scheme. You don't get quite get there, as I said. So uh, the whole kind of the main theorem of all of our geometry, if you want, is Hilbert's Nullstellensatz. And essentially everything is somewhat built around the Nullstellensatz. Um, strictly speaking, I have the consequence of the Nullstellensatz here, um, but yeah, let's just identify the two. And what it was it all about? Well, it was there was this one, one to one correspondence between the geometry. This is like here the varieties. So this is geometry and some algebra, some a certain type of ideals in the coordinate ring. And this is, essentially, it's saying that varieties and ideals are supposed to be the same. Yeah, and then the idea is to somewhat get rid of ambiguities with the underlying field or multiple points. We'll see. Actually, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, benefit from going just to the right hand side. Right? So the right define variety just on the right hand side, which really variety is always this type of picture here, whatever a circle, and on the right hand side it doesn't quite make sense. You replace it by something algebraic. So that's what I meant by you lose a little bit the geometry. But 
it's kind of a really good upshot because you could really do calculations and you will see other type of upshots. Um, something, for example, on the right hand side, we don't actually need a field, which is always this annoying part in algebraic geometry. You always draw real pictures, but you actually never have real pictures. You always talk about complex varieties. Somehow, a little bit to address that, we want to get rid of the field, and doing it on the right hand side is one of these. Uh, upshots that you get here by doing it um, in pure algebra. And what we are going to do is we essentially want ideals. And here's a, one of my favorite examples, actually. Very simple ring. Uh, Z mod 4 mod x squared. Very tiny ring. <laughs> a very finite number of elements. And this is the ideal lattice of, uh, well, this ring. So there's 0, always boring. 2x. And then it splits into... 2, 2 plus x and x, and then 2 and x, and then everything. And you kind of can kind of see here. So this is a maximal ideal. Yeah, this is a this is a maximal ideal. This is there's a minimal ideal. Yep. Minimal ideal. And very excitingly, there's also a prime ideal. Uh there's also a prime ideal, like this guy here, for example. Prime ideal. Uh yeah, very nice. And there are principal ideals and whatever. And just as a reminder, how do we generalize the notion of a prime, which turns out to be kind of crucial to do algebraic geometry? Because, uh, well, I find varieties that should be in bijection with prime ideals. And it's this idea. So a number not equal to one is a prime. Well, a, an ideal not equal to the whole ring is a prime ideal. So this is kind of the same condition. And then the interest is a boring condition in some sense. And then the interesting condition is kind of a strange thing. Maybe you not have never seen that one before, but it actually works really well. So number is a prime. If you if you whenever you divide a product, you divide either of the two factors. Okay. For example, four divides divides two times two, but four divides does not divide two. So four is not a prime number. Yeah. Essentially, that's what this condition is. And if you translate that into uh, ideal language you get well, what is a prime ideal a b in the in the ideal if and only if a or b is in the ideal so we did kind of uh, the it being in is somewhat replaced by uh, sorry the other way around the division is somewhat replaced by being inside of and this is like the correct notion that we need in algebraic geometry because essentially a scheme should now under Hilbert's null standards somewhat be the following. It should be the spectrum of a ring. Yeah, the spectrum is a set of all prime ideals. So you should think of the prime ideals as corresponding to varieties. So on the level of pure algebra, kind of the set of all varieties uh, of all prime varieties of all varieties correspond to the set of all prime ideals. Yeah? And this is exactly the bottom in uh, Mumford's picture spec of the integers because what are the prime ideals in the integers? Well, there's a silly prime ideal. I don't care about that one. Zero is a prime ideal and then the things spent by primes. So here in Mumford's picture, two, three, five, seven, whatever, P. And we're trying to explore the rest of the picture. And that's essentially what a scheme is. Just not quite. Something is still missing. And yeah, what is missing is the, the scheme is a set of all prime ideals. That's, that's not what it's supposed to be. Right? A variety is a set, sure, fine, but the variety is more than a set. And a scheme is a set, set of all prime ideals, sure, fine, but it should be more than just a set. It should be a topology, there should be some Zerusky type topology. Why was that? Because, well, remember that essentially. Um, under the risky topology, the irreducible varieties correspond really to the prime ideals. So that's what we are trying to mimic right now, the irreducible varieties sometimes. And yeah, so something like something like the circle corresponds to a prime ideal on the other side. So instead of just looking at the spectrum, the spectrum of a ring, the set of all prime ideals, we want to look at the topology on that space. And that's what we call, uh, what we will call a scheme. Right, so I'll say it again, just to wrap up. Prime ideals correspond under Hindel Hilbert's notion that's to varieties. 
So why not ignore, well, but I'll write geometry, right? Why not ignore geometry and study algebra? So just define the variety in terms of algebra as being the spectrum of the ring, kind of the collection of all prime ideals, if you want. Um, like as an underlying thing that kind of captures the notion of what it means to be a variety. And yeah, the only missing thing would be a Zariski type topology on that object. And that's what we are going to explore in the next video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.